Anyway, we have a guest judge today. He's comedian and broadcaster A.B. Philbin Bowman. A.B., you're very welcome. We haven't seen you for Thanks, a while. Derek. How are you doing? What are you doing at the moment? Uh, well, I'm, I've sort of worked out a while ago. Now, contrary to, I mean, because you, you can sell out 7,000 tickets, no problem like that in the O2, but those of us mere mortals who can't quite do that, uh, I, I've picked up that people tend not to want to go out so much in the wintertime. So in the winter, I tend to do sort of try and do TV radio things. And, and in the summertime, I go to lots of festivals and do live stand up and do shows and stuff. So at the moment, I'm in my kind of hibernating writing. I did a few jokes for Irish Pictorial Weekly that was on a little while ago. Uh, that I was really happy, amazing show and really happy, like a tiny part of it. Um, and I'm doing a thing with Would You Believe coming up into the February, March and just throwing a few other things around. I, I do a really silly thing on Twitter called Downton Wire, which yeah. is Downton, it's, 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 a, it's a mashup of Downton Abbey and The Wire. Yeah. So it's the plot lines of both shows and the characters intermingling. So That's things fabulous. like, you know, Lord Grantham's grouse hunting expedition is ruined when Prez Belusky accidentally shoots one of the servants. Yeah. That sort of thing, you know? You have to watch both programmes to get you, you, you do, you <laughs> absolutely, if you don't watch, but you're kind of, you're kind of, I got yeah, the first no. part of it. But I, I love, knew who I Lord the, Grantham was. I love the intersection, though, of things. I, I, I love, actually, that you guys have cast jo, uh, Joe Duffy as a psychic, because... You see, that's it's a weird decision because to me, so I think of psychics as kind of people like you, full, as you were saying, full of BS, Thank charlatans, you, <laughs> preying on vulnerable people. Now, why you could cast Joe Duffy as that, I, I do not know. I find it very intriguing as a cast. Anyway, I won't get into that. Go on. But, uh, so I'm, I'm doing various bits and pieces. I'm sort of writing things and, and, and tweeting and, and uh, come up with scripts and ideas for things that might work and might be funny at some point in the future, hopefully. You know shows on at the moment because the last uh, time we spoke live. to you, you were touring the country. Yeah, well, I did this, this really interesting thing during the summer, which is a, a barter comedy tour. And the idea was that we would, myself and Aidan Killian, uh, my sort of partner in crime, we, we travelled around the country and we did free gigs about the financial crisis. Uh, this is the other end of comedy. So it's a very, you know, sort of um, a bit too serious, but, you know, sort of about stuff. Um, and, and we were, uh, and, and wildly unpopular also. Uh, but we were doing this show, Barter Tour, and it was free. But the trouble is that then we then had no money for food and nowhere to stay. So the audience had to give us somewhere to stay and feed us. Um, and uh, it was great fun and we got not only did were we fed very well fed very well looked after very well received but we also ended up getting like people giving us their CDs of their music and we got homemade creme liqueur and organic salad and somebody took us water skiing like we had really interesting but how do you adventure. earn a living Amy? Uh, I don't you don't want me to <laughs> is the answer uh, well I, I do I do do other gigs where I, I get sort of paid but I don't I don't make an awful lot of money but then again in this current climate nobody does make an awful lot of money I have a lot of fun uh, travelling around and, and doing gigs and would you ever and consider something like the Edinburgh Fringe, fringe Festival isn't that the I have, I have done the Edinburgh Fringe and Festival five or six times and the last time I did it was 2011 and I sold £9,000 sterling of tickets and I lost money so how did you lose money? Goes, well this is the point Edinburgh is completely someone said to me try, going to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival now where there are like 2,600 shows going to Edinburgh to get spotted as a comedian is like going to the Vietnam War to get spotted as a serial killer there's a lot of it about. <laughs> and if you are a 20 or 30 sure something white guy uh, with facial hair talking about your life, good luck with that. Uh, so I did Edinburgh back in 2006. I actually I amazingly made money at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival my first three years, which is you're not meant to do at all. But uh, it's gotten to a stage now where unless you're already huge, it's very, very hard to break out at Edinburgh. So it's but much, you've got to start somewhere. Well, you have a lot to, of people absolutely. have. Jason Byrne, more Jason Blatt. Byrne is huge at Edinburgh now. Yeah, I mean, he's built up a, 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 a fan base there that is enormous and phenomenal. He sold more tickets to Edinburgh than anyone else. I yes, think, but he says it's because festival. he's been playing there longer than anybody else. Uh, that's <laughs> that's probably, yeah. and he comes back but every he's good, single Jason year. As well. oh, he's, he's a very nice, fabulous. entertaining yeah, yeah. guy. Very, very, live, very natural. Live but so you can make it. I mean, you, you can, can get spotted you, you as You can point. get there eventually, but I, I, think, I think you could make it 15 years ago. I, I think, like, when I, the first year I did it, there were 1,600 shows. Now there's 2,600. Like, it's just getting exponentially bigger every single year. Like, my first year was 2006. It's not that long ago. Mm. So it's gotten to a point where being the one person who breaks through... Like, the first year I went, I actually kind of almost was the person who broke through. As in, I did a show called Jesus, the Guantanamo Years. It got in the front of magazines. It got in Sky News. It got in Le Monde. It was great. It was great publicity. The show sold out for the whole run and I made money. But I got back to Dublin and I was back to doing six or seven minute open spots in, you know, the International and people were you know, who are, no one had heard of it, no one cared. Mm. So I had to then pick it up and bring it all around the country and I took it to America and Pakistan. But nobody does it for you. You know, you don't just make it at Edinburgh. You brought it to Pakistan? I, I did religious, I'm one of the few comedians stupid enough to do religious political comedy in a Muslim country during a state of emergency. Quite proud of that. And yeah. it was great fun. The, the audience really got into it and uh, it wasn't quite a Mrs. Brown's reaction but it was... It was no, but they, Mrs. Really Brown, it. like Brendan, when we started off we were doing pubs as well and sure. um, you've got to do that. Absolutely. Oh, no, it's absolutely... Like with comedy, it's so hard to do <clears throat> mm. and I'm only acting in comedy shows. I'm not a comedian. 
but Brendan is. And when I started working with him back in 1991, he was doing gigs in, in, in pubs where it was like £2 or £3 on the door. And um, we used to just travel all over the country and you build up and you build yeah. up and you build up. Absolutely. And then you take your opportunities when you get them and you take your breaks when you get them and you build on them. Um, and nothing, I don't, there's very few comedians that happen overnight. You've Absolutely got to really put not. The you're totally right. In to get it. Com- comedy but is it in a way. If, you're go- if, you've, if you keep at it and you're good, like it should, there's no reason why it shouldn't work out. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. taken Brandon 20. In the UK, sure. a lot of them say to us, oh, you're like, you, you came out of nowhere. 20 years. No, no, Brendan's been doing these things for do 20 it. years. Do you know Absolutely. I mean? so, do you I'm, like it, AB, just sort of curiosity? I, I, I'm not, I'm not, wouldn't be, wouldn't be, I haven't actually seen it, to be fair. Um, it's, it's never it's, seen it? Never seen it, no. Have you got a TV? I do, yes. I have um, never seen it. By, by, cho- by choosing to watch other things. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very, that, that woman who phoned in to complain, go, it's terrible, it's awful. Just, it's got a remote control, darling. Yeah. Switch off. If it's not your thing, don't want, the reason I don't, I haven't seen it, is because I see a lot of comedy live, and you see a lot of live stuff, you get this certain stuff, like, I can't watch Friends, which is hugely popular. I've never, never seen Friends. I can't, watch, I've never seen it I can't watch it, because I, when I'm watching Friends, I, I can see it. the jokes coming about 30 seconds away, and I go, they're going to set up that joke, and I can see, and it just doesn't do, do it for me. So I, so when you, it's like a musician, you know, musicians like very specific types of music you know mm. it's like you know just so because you wouldn't like Mrs Brown's boys I'm not saying I wouldn't like it I'm saying I haven't seen well, it and I might it would be kind of like torture for you if, if, if we made you watch it Billy Connolly <laughs> said something on the late late a few weeks ago and um, he said that he doesn't look at any comedy whatsoever he looks at nothing because um, he would start to probably take somebody's act or take bits of jokes or something That's like the danger, that. That's the danger, isn't it? Would do. Well, so he it, just makes yeah. a conscious decision never to look at any other comedy. It's, it's more that if you... It's, it's, it, uh, for me, what it is, it's like, it's like because I see a lot of comedy, there's a very specific... Certain very specific things I really, really love in comedy. Mm. And... You know, that's just not it. That's just not the thing that does it for me. Would you like but, Jimmy Carr, for example? Uh, Jimmy Carr, uh, he can be he can be amazing. He can be kind of o- over the line. I, I I think Jimmy Carr is. I look at comedy sometimes like like sprint like running. You've got your marathon runners and your sprinters, and Jimmy Carr is a world class sprinter. Over seven minutes, he can fit more jokes into a seven minute routine than almost anyone mm. alive. But over an hour, if you just hear one liner after one liner for an hour, it just gets kind of exhausting. Well, I watched his concert there a few weeks ago. I thought it was very good on TV. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it can it work. It was on for over an hour, and uh, hey, yeah, listen, it sustained it. You, you know, we, absolutely. If 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 it works for, for me, is there a comedian then you admire? Then, oh, loads, loads of comedians. Any right. Irish people? Ones you uh, Dara O'Brien, absolutely huge fan of Dara O'Brien. I think he's a genius. Um, and I love the way he makes you sort of think and at the same time without it being inaccessible. Yeah. I think that's just a brilliant thing to do. Uh, I love Barry Murphy and the whole pictorial team thought Irish Pictorial Weekly was just stunning. Um, is that because you were in it? No, I wasn't in it. I, was, I wrote five jo- a total of five jokes in the whole four four episodes. So it's not that. I just genuinely, the stuff I had nothing to do with, I thought was, Eleanor Tiernan was a revelation. She's brilliant. Uh, Tommy Tiernan's great. Um, I've, I've low, a list as long as your arm of, of stand-ups I really like. But I think there's a certain thing that just twitches it for me and it's just, it's just not quite sitcom. But you're right. If you don't like it, yeah, just switch it off.